Resting on the banks of the Mississippi River lies a plantation in the river parishes of Louisiana. Hidden by huge oak trees that shield it from outside view, there's a dark past that many do not know of. Plantations have long been used as a backdrop for weddings and movies, but there are many hidden secrets and stories that have yet to come to light. These harrowing experiences of the people who live here and haunting exhibits have led me to come back and check out this piece of history and to find out why over 200 people were decapitated and their heads mounted on spikes for all of River Road to see. And this is their story. The day is right, we're going to check out we're going to check out the Whitney Plantation in Egor, Louisiana. It's about 50 miles from New Orleans, um, down in the river parishes. And the crazy part is, there's so many plantations alone in this area. And this is the only one that has been converted into a museum. So we're going to go ahead and check it out. Now I'll show y'all what it's hidden for. Check back in with y'all. Peace. The day started with me leaving the city of New Orleans and traveling through what we call the river parishes. These parishes or counties flank the Mississippi River and the route snakes its way past the alligator field bayous in the area. The weather was cool and sharp and the sun was beaming like high beams in the dead of night. The geography of this region lends itself to many bodies of water and bridges to cross over. And this ride felt a little different from the rest as there was a lot less traffic than normal and something inside of me had my spider senses tingling like Peter Parker. The research I had done on this plantation kept floating around in my head. This definitely isn't something that I do daily, but something I felt compelled to see. And as I continued along the two lane route up toward the plantation, my mind and sight started to visually paint the scene of massive oak trees and cotton fields that stretched many football fields and soon enough, I will make my way to my destination for the day. So here we are, gotta go ahead and check it out. Excuse me. That's, that's tight. Tap on the green button first. Mm -hmm. It's going to start with an intro and then 14 stops on the ground. Okay. Once you get to a stop, enter that number and then hit play. Okay, so each stop. E stop is just a different number. Yeah, and they, they all play. got numbers at each stop. Okay. You got 14 in total, okay? I gather my bearings around the gift shop and plan my route across the grounds. So y'all, just give me headphones, and now we gonna walk around Whitney Plantation. There's a stop for each spot, and you can press play, and it'll give you a brief synopsis of what's going on. So this part was just talking about a lot where um, a lot of the, the people who worked at the Whitney Plantation from coming over from the, uh, the slave trade up until their death and also how they received a lot of their names. They had to be baptized and given a new Christian name. They could not keep their African names. Leaving the first installation on the grounds would set the tone for the rest of the day. I would make my way up to the big house. And it was a plantation owner's home and enslaved laborers built this raised Creole cottage in 1790 from cypress and brick. Walking up to this massive structure, I'm mentally paralyzed by how well the structure was preserved, but also imagining what the day-by-day -day life was for those inside and outside. The tables and pottery inside the big house remained the same for hundreds of years. 
and I continued to walk inside and around the grounds, taking it all in. So, right here is the plantation store. And this is where the workers were able to shop for clothing and medicine and stuff like that. And uh, it was it was like a system of credit. So anything they got from it was like credit. And you know the people who still worked and stayed on the plantation, uh, instead of them getting a check, or well, they would get a check, but or get their payment, but whatever they got from. The uh, store was deducted, deducted from their uh, their check. When Martin Luther King was assassinated, all of the plantation stores were burned down. Not just here at the Whitney Plantation, but at uh, all of the plantations that sits along River Road. And that was just the road that we just, you know, we passed through. Kitchens were pretty much held outside in a separate building away from the uh, main house or the big house, as they called it, to keep the heat, the uh, cooking smells and all that stuff away from the, you know, the people who stayed in the house. And now we have the jail. This jail was manufactured after the Civil War and was used in Gonzales, Louisiana, which is not too far from here. You know, they use it for a multitude of reasons. It could be from transporting of slaves and just, you know, keeping them on the grounds. They were just used to, to put the work on different uh, projects in the area. Right here we got the overseer's house, you know, of course. Overseers, you know, oversaw all of the slaves and you know all of the workers who lived on the plantation as well. And this area is blocked off; we can't get a walk over here on here. But y'all can kind of see the structure. thing about how cool and how hot it must have been during the winter months and the summer months with just you know five plates and of course no insulation and that's pretty much it though sometimes you just gotta be just grateful you may not be have the biggest house or the best house but you have a house that's better than a lot so these houses were built from cypress on the plantation there's 22 slave quarters on the grounds and two more near the big house. So of course, um, staying near the Gulf of Mexico, you're bound to get hit by tropical storms and hurricanes and things like that. And um, in 2021, a storm hit this plantation directly and knocked down uh, a couple of the, the slave quarters. This is, a, it, it really puts things in perspective. Um, it's very somber and makes you think a lot how far we have come, but how far we still have to go.
and this is this is definitely it hits home. It hits home. The next stop would be one of the most significant of the day, as I saw the aftermath of the German coast uprising of 1811. In January 1811, enslaved individuals, primarily from the sugar plantations along the German coast of the Mississippi River, initiated a rebellion. Led by Charles Deslon, a mixed race slave and other key figures, the rebels aimed to challenge the oppressive conditions of slavery and seek freedom. The rebels marched down river toward New Orleans, looting plantations and recruiting more enslaved individuals along the way. The revolt was brutally suppressed by local militia and federal troops sent by the government. The confrontation took place over the course of two days, resulting in the deaths of many enslaved individuals and their leaders. The aftermath was severe, with the heads of executed rebels displayed on pikes along the river as a gruesome warning. I walked a little bit more slowly to my next stop, which was the Field of Angels, a memorial dedicated to the 2,200 children who died between 1823 and 1863 from harsh labor and disease. Too many, too often, some of the investigations do not reflect the ethical issue. Mm -hmm. They talk about the big house and taking pictures for weddings and being on the right. walls, taking pictures. Right. But Whitney focuses on the ethnicity of what actually really truly happened. You mm -hmm. want to be there, but we had no children. An angel was erected in the center of this area, essentially watching over the babies who did not get a chance to grow old. And in this moment, I think about my own kids and what it would be like to lose them at such a young age. Gwendolyn Hall and uh an American historian and genealogist spent 15 years sifting through records to uncover the names, birthplaces of over 107,000 enslaved people who've come over here. And these are all of the names of those people in this area right here. There's just so many people. Oh my goodness. Like this is, it's crazy. My very last stop on the grounds will be to visit the church. And when times are very stressful and bleak, many will look to a higher power to get them through the many tough times they were going through and the many tough times ahead. But having a place where people can gather peacefully was a refuge for all. And I just took it all in and I just sat around and I could see the children dancing and singing their hearts out. And I can hear the music playing and the people clapping. This was their light in the midst of darkness. I felt a heavy weight as I exited the church doors and I feel the mood that was on the others that passed me by as well. I walked around the plantation one last time, allowing myself to truly feel and to take in what I had experienced on this day. And I always feel a sense of gratitude just to be alive, but today I'm grateful for much, much more. Grateful for those things that I've seen and for those who have blazed a trail for everyone to live together in unity. Leaving the premises, I start my ride back towards the city. And the long gravel drive we had me bracing myself all the way up until the road. And on my way home, I take a more relaxed approach. 
just cruising and watching the harvested cotton fields that stood no more. And as this trip comes to a close, I have a few thoughts. The only way for us to move forward in the future is to honor and acknowledge the past. And I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. And this is your man, GQ, the leader of the Peace Army, telling you guys to be safe, be cool, and most importantly, be you and peace out until we meet again.